How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and I want to thank you for joining me. Well, because this is going to be a really special video. Um, if you've watched Nature Here and Now over the past few years, I'm sure you're quite aware that the, the Pine Barrens is an extremely medicinal and sacred place to me. It is, a, aside from the, the pulse of my loved ones, the Pine Barrens are my second home. It is where I feel the, the safest and the most free. I come here and it just washes away the, the anxiety and pressures of the rest of the world. And I lose myself amongst the environment of Wharton State Forest. There are so many things that you can only find here. There are so many species of insect or reptile and amphibian and bird that can be found nowhere else in the world. And some of the habitats and landscapes here are so stunning, I'm left speechless for minutes, if not hours, after just surrendering myself to them. But I have two very special friends of mine, Evan and Harrison Black, who are going to be joining me on their first camping trip and their first experience of the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. Okay, so we're in the pines now, and how do you guys feel about being here? So excited. This... I've wanted to come to the Barrens, do camping for the longest time, and now we're here with a veritable expert, so I couldn't ask for much more it's than been, that. It's been years in the making, talking on and off, planning days, weekends falling through, so to be standing here is surreal, almost. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm super excited. There's a lot of places, like even if we didn't find any wildlife, just the, the landscapes. Thought I saw a cicada. <laughs> Roger that. The, just the landscapes alone are just surreal, stunning, and, and breathtaking. And I, I can't wait to show you some, some of the spots that I just love. They, they steal my heart away. And... So we're, uh, we've been walking along and I saw something fly by in the air and I thought it might have been an idoculatus. And then uh, we were getting ready for the intro for their video. And this one just gracefully flies up and lands on his back, <laughs> which uh, was beautiful. Um, now, I haven't seen giant click beetles in the Pine Barrens before. We get them at home a lot, but that's pretty cool because being June, they'll actually come out in May. It's like probably the biggest beetle that you'll have that early in the season. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? One of my favorite coleopters. Now, their larva um, are rather elongated, especially their pupa, uh, but they're really neat looking because they look like an Egyptian okay. pharaoh, uh, which I have a video all about that. You got to check it out because it's so neat looking. See what it makes you think of. Do you have anything to say about it? No, yeah, this is actually not a species I was expecting to see. Me neither. Um, and one this big too. I'm actually really stoked. Now, is that pressure, Chris, that it's exerting, or is that a mechanical sound? It's, uh, it's the mechanical sound of it actually popping out of the notch. But those, that wasn't the groove I was talking about. I mean, he, oh, why do I even hang out with these guys? <laughs> oh, do you mean on the back? No, the grooves that the legs fit into oh, oh, to oh, keep oh, birds oh, from wow. being able to get them. I never even noticed that, actually. Yeah, it is. Can you see them? Mm-hmm. It tucks its legs. Wow, they fit right into its body. I guess that's the like reduce. It's like a transformer. It's like yeah, it's, perfect. that reduces anything that a predator could latch onto. Mm -hmm. Really nice. And there's actually their antenna too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they yeah, tuck they're... them in right on under the uh, pronotum there, under the thorax, the top of the thorax. Okay. Oh yeah, and now it's sticking its antenna out. So I'm excited. That's that might be a good sign. Either that's going to be the only thing we find this whole trip, or that's just like big crash there. Yeah, could be a sign of good things to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes that's a flying squirrel missing, but there was no noise after it. Um, so we're gonna eat this beetle, and then we're going on to the next spot. Who gets it? This is like the spot for the orange-winged grasshoppers. 
And you guys have been looking forward to seeing those, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, have, yep. So this is going to be definitely a good one. And we'll probably get some velvet ants, like guaranteed. But they don't sit still. They're so fast around here. But uh, let's get this going. Yeah. We're going to find some orange wings, like, right There's now. There's actually one right there. <laughs> Must have been hit by a car. Dude, I didn't do that, did I? No, no, no this, this is old. He's already stiff. Yeah. Oh, wait, you know what? There is something cool you could show with this. What's that? My favorite feature, that beautiful blue. Oh, wow. Tell wow. me that is not a work that of art. That is gorgeous. So the inside of their hind legs is this beautiful, like, would you say it's lapis? It's yeah. not quite lapis. Is it lapis? It, it's oh, slightly lighter. Lapis is more like a royal blue. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you got one? Well, it's dead. Yeah, but check out, check out the inner yeah, hind leg. Yeah, get Harrison's genuine reaction. Look at the inside of their leg. Holy crap. That's yeah. gorgeous. They're beautiful. beautiful. And then bright orange wings, obviously. But that, Look at that. The, the legs go underappreciated. Yeah, they do. Yep, there's the wing. A little chewed up because this one was probably hit by a car, we think. It was in some tire tracks. Wow. But they are just beautiful. Now yeah, we have to see a live species. one. Oh, yeah. We have to get a live one in hand. So, promise has been fulfilled. There are a ton of orange wings in this spot. But what's really exciting for me is, one, it's a lifer for Evan yep. and Harrison, right? So that's exciting. But I had never seen a brown or tan variety of the orange wing. At first, I was like, is that an orange wing? But it's got that blue as well as the characteristic orange rear wing. So, I mean, I guess this is an orange wing. It's definitely a banded grasshopper or a bandwing grasshopper. But the turquoise, you don't see until it sticks its head out. But this which I'll show you, uh, which I've already filmed before, you'll see the much more characteristic version of the orange wing, which is this military patchy camouflage looking thing. This brown, this is a morph I'm not used to. What was that? There's some dry yucca. I've, I've collected a bunch, is that what you were asking? Yeah, if you want Yeah, to. I've collected a bunch and I did my- And uh, there's cacti. Yes, prickly pear. Right here. And prickly pear right now is going to be in bloom. It blooms in June. Yeah. And we're going to have a ton oh, wow. of fruit in a couple of months. Look right here. Get some shots of that. That's gorgeous. I mean, if, if we want to no, it. no, no. There's a better one over there. Oh, there is? Yeah. Oh, like, I see it. It's out of Yeah. You weren't kidding when you said that this field is full of them. So that was super cool. Just to, as, as you walk through, we'll try and get a shot of this. If you just walk a straight line through the grass, they erupt into a, a cloud of orange. So that's just awesome to see. Partially because there's so many there. Okay, so the brothers just got doused in ticks and uh, responding to the situation. But I look over and I catch something glistening in the sun. It is my favorite coleoptera, my second favorite. It is Calisoma scrutator, which is the fiery searcher. And it's feeding. We've all seen fiery searchers before. We've seen fiery searchers in each other's company, but I have never seen one eating before in the middle of the day. I haven't either. So we were joking that Evan and I just got tick bombed, so this is the universe's way of saying sorry by providing us with a really cool invertebrate encounter. This is awesome. Yeah, it is. That's he just beautiful. doesn't care at all. I, I notice this a lot when I see invertebrates kind of doing their thing, whether it's spiders or mantises or beetles. We can get as close as we want. Look at this. We can stand right next to it and stare <laughs> at it, and they don't care. They just keep going. We had a grasshopper eat in my hand earlier. Yeah, yeah. That was, honestly, that was so unexpected, especially mm -hmm. with a grasshopper. Right. Because that's, ooh. Oh, he just left. Yeah, a fly just bounced off his face. Oh, that's too bad. What, a, what an amazing, I absolutely love the fiery searchers. This is a northern black widow. You probably can't see her right now. She's not acting aggressive whatsoever. And I filmed widows before. I've got a cool video about them. It's a long video, 
And now, right now, she's sitting still, the wind's getting her, but she is not contemplating biting me. She's contemplating freedom, most likely. Absolutely. Um, but what a beautiful species. Now, however, notice the markings on the back. Much of the time, the adult ones will keep those markings, um, but other times this abdomen will get really black and you'll just have almost a complete hourglass on the bottom of the abdomen. But um, this species doesn't get quite as big as Latrodectus mectens, which is like the southern black widow, but its venom, surprisingly, is more potent. Um, I'm a little intimidated by spiders, right? And I know that you could, not that you should do what we're doing. Absolutely. Definitely don't handle any wildlife, especially a hot spider, something that could land you in the hospital. Not to mention the fact that if you have anaphylaxis, that's life-threatening. That's just an allergic reaction to anything. And what we're doing is we're putting our faith in science. Science and many biologists before us this is not an uncalculated guess. Absolutely. You know, we are paying our attention to what's been learned and studied about these species. Not to mention all three of us, Chris especially, but for Evan and myself, we've been studying wildlife for 17 years. So we've learned, spent years studying black widows in captivity, seeing other species of widows down in North Carolina, for example, and we've handled hundreds upon hundreds of spiders. We know how to read their body language. We can take into account things like the temperature and time of day and how that might affect their mood and their behavior. So in this specific instance, with this specific individual, we are confident taking this risk, and it is a risk. But please, do not replicate anything you see us doing. It just isn't worth it. That's the thing. We've spent all this time telling you how they're likely not to bite, and the bite isn't even as dangerous as some people make it out to be. All of that is true. But when you have the potential for risk, it's just not worth it, unless you can read the situation and read it fully. Right, right. There's a lot of body language here that we're paying attention to with anything we handle or work with. I mean, we work with vespids and stinging insects all the time, but there are, everything out there puts out a ton of, you know, cues with their body language, let alone, you know, verbal language, mm -hmm. depending on what it is. But there's a lot of body language here with, with arachnids and herps that we read. And, um, you get used to this stuff after a while, paying attention to it, you know, just like the letters in the alphabet. They all look weird at first, but after a while, they start forming words, and then those words become sentences. We are definitely listening to what the spider's saying, and it's saying, I don't want you holding me, but I'm okay as long as you keep cool. I'll keep cool. So, I say we turn her loose, but I you agree. have the honors. We're not going to film the release because there's something else I want to do. Where'd you go? There we go. And this is actually a great way to release them like this. This is what we call an escape thread. When the spider has let out a strand of silk and it's just enough to get her to the ground. So before she falls, we'll just bring her her house is right here. So all I'm going to do, drop her down. And she will have let go of that thread of silk in a moment. And there we go. She is free. Look at that. No worse for wear. But that was awesome, man. Go ahead. All right. Break this the law. My first time yeah. with New Jersey blueberries. I'm reporting them. I got to use your phone to call the office mm -hmm. to report you. Tastes illegal. It tastes illegal. It and tastes that's the, really good. that's the best flavor right there. You going to film this? Yeah, just a bit. So look at this these ants walking along. And the cool thing is, is this is the beginning of their trail. It's like a migration. And we could tell that they're all coming this way because some of them are going in both directions. But they're all carrying parcels with them, many of them. The ones that are carrying parcels are coming in this direction. So I don't know where they're going, but we know where they're coming from, or we will. They're coming from that way. Are they carrying eggs, I imagine? Yes. Yeah, this one has an egg. Yeah. There are a couple of this one, so they must be moving. Do they move? Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of other species in the Amazon and everything do that. And of course, they bivouac. Mm. Whatever. So, cool. 
but not as exciting as I thought. There was supposed to be like a casino or something at the end, and there isn't. There's just a couple of stragglers. Nature. This is new, and it's on top of our tracks. Okay, so now we're at the yard. I call it the yard because there's so much activity here, usually. Not right now. And as you can tell, <laughs> sorry, I'm looking in the wrong spot. That ball of fire is kissing the horizon. And um, so pretty soon it's gonna be dark, obviously, because that's what happens. And uh, I'm gonna be taking them to another location, but I really wanted to show them this spot, hoping to see some carpenters, but no dice. No, not right now. Another now. And uh, after that, we're going to go to a different location. And then we're going to probably hit... I want to take them to a couple spots at night that look really cool and surreal. Um, but at some point, we have to build a fire. Cook something. So this is one of my favorite locations out here. Um, it's just always beautiful. I could hear a carpenter frog out there. Um, this is where I actually go swimming sometimes when I'm camping, but this is also where I just reset. This is a nice reset spot for me. And look at this beautiful sunset. Tell you what, what do you think of that? That's got to be one of the most beautiful sunsets I've seen. For sure. We've been to several different countries. Some, we've seen sunsets in a lot of natural in places. The, in the Caribbean, in Costa Rica. Top that five. Is, that is top five. And I'll tell you why. I won't just make up some stuff and say, ooh, top five. Here's why. I love aquatic habitats. I love ghost trees. And there is not a human sound anywhere. Couldn't say that about Costa Rica. Couldn't say that about the British Virgin Islands. Can't say that about spots that we've seen nice sunsets in PA. Nothing. No planes, no cars, no people. Wildlife and nature, and those are the only sounds we hear. Represent, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could be in another world. Yeah. Right? And th that's what I was going to say. This is like textbook Pine Barrens right here. This is gorgeous. And there was another spot that I was going to bring you for sunset. I'm glad. That's really here. nice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I like this one best. And I'm really sentimental about this one, but the, the ghost trees for me, that really does it. All these pads and everything do it. But um, that other spot is like this on a much larger, grander scale. Wow. That's all. You <laughs> see your bright eyes in the background. I see my face lights. and I just see those, those two pairs of bright eyes behind me. Okay, so obviously it's nighttime now. We hit that beautiful spot for the sunset. And uh, it was gorgeous, and that fails, never fails to produce in that spot, the, the serenity. But uh, we're sort of doing a little bit of road cruising now. We're stopping by this little bit of a wetlands to find some stuff. Uh, we just found a leopard, which is pretty cool. But what are we seeing the most of tonight so far? Bowler's toads. Oh, yeah. All over the Everywhere. road as we're driving. Bowler's toad, bowler's toad, yeah. bowler's toad. So nice to break up the monotony with a leopard frog. Yeah, it is. It is. And we'll the leopards stop. are... And look at some of the fowler stones, because yeah, they're quite enough. pretty too. But. Yeah, that's a good call. And uh, maybe we'll show you a trick, but maybe we won't. But <laughs> right now, I'm getting my butt kicked by mosquitoes. Me yep. too. Yeah. The lights are bringing them in, I think. They, they are, they are. And we're right, right, we're right next to a cedar swamp, mm -hmm. which, like, they have more mosquitoes than any other wetlands around here. The cedar swamps have the most. So uh, let's see what we can find. We'll probably show you a couple of things, but... Uh, how do you guys feel about herping this area at night? You haven't found a whole lot, but... We haven't. Is, what's your, what kind of feelings are you experiencing right now? So as herpers primarily who spend time in the Northeast, there's this kind of mystery about the Pine Barrens. It's one of the most famous spots on the East Coast, certainly the most famous in Jersey. And it's actually really exciting because this is our first time really spending time boots on the ground in the Barrens. So we were saying, <coughs> we were saying off camera, that we kind of have some dues to pay, yep. putting some hours on the ground, 
looking for things. And if we do that long enough, hopefully we'll get something cool. Yeah, isn't and that the truth? We, we were saying earlier, even if the night isn't as maybe successful as we'd hoped, it's still just a ton of fun being out here and exploring this habitat that we've heard yeah. so much about. And now we're living it. And yeah. that, I can't get enough yeah, of. Yeah, I can't wait to show them another section that's so like surreal and just has its eerie beauty to it. But uh, let's check this out a little bit. We might check the swamp out there, but I don't know yet. Take a look at how big that beetle is. That is an impressive animal. They have a really fun form of self-defense that I've always found very amusing. It's called stridulation, which is just the fancy entomological term for making sound with your exoskeleton. So in their case, I believe they're rubbing their the side of their elytra, their hard wing covering, with their leg, or it may be from expelling air out of their spiracles, their breathing holes. I'm actually not sure how they produce the sound, but I do know that because they're an invertebrate like this, they don't have a voice box or anything like a mammal does. So they are making the sound with their exoskeleton, with their body, and I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Something else that's pretty neat about this species is they will actually uh, make those audio signals to communicate with each other. And it's not just forms of aggression. This is actually a social species. Mm -hmm. And what's really neat about them, they'll even literally hand feed their young. And not oh, only, wait. oh, that one just did it. Actually, that does sound like it's pushing air out of its spiracle. Right. My guess, I'll rep, I'll, uh, I'll fix my, my explanation here. It sounds like it's pushing air out of its breathing holes, its spiracles, which run all the way down the body. Now, there are other beetles that produce stridulation by rubbing their abdomen with their legs. And in fact, that's how a lot of orthopterans, katydids, grasshoppers, and crickets produce their sounds. And the velvet ants. Velvet ants, yep, yep. they do that. They actually rub their segments of abdomen together. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, this is a really cool species. The fact that they have, like babysitters and help feed not only their young but other young it's really neat considering the fact that these are beetles you know they're not mammals and they're they're a communal species look at that there goes a Pretty june cool. bug that yep. june bug just flew right into my back that is awesome okay i say we turn them loose yeah let's do it and go to the next spot all right come on guys back onto your log and actually while it's still here this is a June bug, another type of beetle. Oh, and you're this all right. Actual species. Bye. <laughs> is the main reason why black widows have such strong webs. This is the preferred food of the black widow, and that is a substantial meal. That's why the black widows have such potent venom. It's to be able to subdue something so large. Okay, so one of the, the quintessential arachnids of June, or anywhere from this point up until like October, are of course the Lycosidae, but this is my favorite one. This is Hagna baltimoreana, and right now the brothers are getting some shots of it, and then we're going to actually look at it closer. Is this your first time seeing this yes, species? Yes, it is. Wow. Yeah, it is, and this is actually one of the larger uh, wolf spiders that we've seen in New Jersey. Oh, we're going to see something bigger about a mile down the road then. Oh wow, beautiful. Isn't it a work of art? Yeah, this one reminds me, I know you've probably seen the video, but it reminds me of the ornamentals a little bit. Mm-hmm. Hi. But look the Carolanianensis really reminds me of ornamentals. Let's see. There's the size I comparison. I wonder if it'll let me hold it. They're really fast. They are fast. These as, are active, as with many wolf spiders. These are active predators. Yep. So this is not a species that sits in a web and waits for prey to come to it. They are active hunters out here in the leaf litter. <laughs> Show me the spider and oh, I see it. Do you want to do a segment with it? Put your light back on it, thanks. This species doesn't usually get too much bigger than this. Sure. Oh, you should have seen that. That was so got funny. Guys, what, huh? what the heck just happened? Okay, so clearly this video is getting to be a bit too long, so I've decided to break it up into a couple of parts. Um, you definitely want to stay tuned for part two, however, because we make a really fun discovery and some other fun stuff happens. Um, so I think you're going to like it. In the meantime, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.